Hi there everyone, my name is Pirag Juthani. I'm an MD MBA student here at Yale and today I want to tell you about five mistakes that I made in medical school so that you don't make the same mistakes. This is particularly important because a lot of medical students decided today or yesterday what medical school they would attend because it's May 1st. And so hopefully this helps them but also you regardless of what path you are on your journey to medical school. Each of these truths and mistakes are going to get more and more crazy. So hopefully by the end, you start realizing just how real some of these can be. And especially number five, I think there's a lot of value there. So stick around. The first mistake that I made is that I was trying to do it alone almost all the time. Quit trying to do it alone. The moment you start medical school, usually most of the leashes come off and you can be yourself. But the problem is to get to medical school, you had to take the MCAT on your own, you had to take tests on your own, you had to ace everything on your own, you had to do research on your own. And so it's a very individualistic field when you as you're getting there. But in reality, in medical school, if you just ask for help, which is going to be one of the latter tips, you will actually be able to achieve much more uh, important things than you ever would on your own. People have taken me farther than I ever expected, and what may be impossible to you will become 80 times easier when you have the assistance and guidance of someone else who's either been through the ringer or someone else who wants to join the cause. People really do want to help you, but you need to ask, and I find that a lot of medical students, myself included, and even pre-meds, were hesitant to ask because it's such an individualistic culture. But I will recommend that you definitely continue to ask for help because the more you try to do it alone, the harder this journey becomes. The second tip that I have for you is to learn to say no. We often get through medicine because it's a hierarchy. And the lower you are on the totem pole, the more you're kind of expected to appease the people above you. And while that there is value there, you can't always say yes to everything because the more you more things to say, you say yes to, the more thin you're going to become spread and the less likely you're going to be to have um, to have time to focus on the things you actually care about. So you don't actually always have to be a yes man. And more importantly, when you say no to things, it allows you to focus on things that you actually care about. Of course, you have to be respectful when you say no, but just remember that you can say no both inside and outside the hospital. If there's multiple things that you're working on right now and someone else throws something else on your plate, it's okay to say, hey, my hands are a bit full right now. Do you mind if I circle back to you in a month or two? These things are very, very important. But earlier on in med school, I used to say yes to everything. And I think that pretty um, that compounded pretty quickly. And it just kind of got to a point where I realized like, I need to start saying no to things and specifically things that I know I'm definitely not interested in, like basic science research. So as you figure out what you're interested in, learn to say yes to those things and learn to say no in other things. That's the second tip. The third mistake that I made, and I feel like now I'm just so much better at this, is communicating. And this is important both inside and outside the hospital. Inside the hospital, whenever you start working with a new resident, a new team member, and a new uh, attending, it's so important to introduce yourself, to say who you are, what you're good at, what you're not good at, and what you're hoping to learn. I used to not do this because I used to go into the hospital and just get straight into work, like, hi, how can I be helpful? But when you actually take the time to introduce yourself and realize that people are human beings too, and that we all are just here for the same reason, which is to take care of patients, people just start realizing that they like being with you and they like spending time with you. But a lot of people forget those basics. And because of that, it's very easy to get carried away and get overwhelmed because if you're going straight to the hospital and jumping straight into work, it's just so much easier to kind of neglect the fact that we're all people here and we're all like overworked and it's tough to like see the humanity in it. More importantly, even in the preclinical years, I, I almost wonder how much better it would have been if I had communicated with people about what I was confused about uh, because I actually struggled to say that because in medical school, you feel like everyone is always like ahead of you. Everyone understands it better. They're not confused. Uh, people seem to be understanding what's going on. But I wish I had communicated when I didn't understand what was going on because the people I know to this day that are one of the smartest in our class were the people who would say, hey, I'm confused about this. Hey, why does this value represent this instead of this? And by asking these questions and being open and honest about what you do and don't know and communicating with others, you really start putting yourself miles ahead of other people. So now number four and five are going to get a bit more serious and it actually is like quite real and pretty close to me. So hopefully, um, you know, you get some value out of this, but more importantly, it's also therapeutic for me to say this. Number four is the fact that it never ends, so don't create nar narratives. I made this mistake in my second and third year of med school where I said, hey, all I have to worry about now is step one and step two, and then I'm going to be done. I'm going to be so happy after this. It's going to be the best time of my life. I'm just going to work hard for now, and then like, once I know what step one and step two, I'll be able to relax. But the crazy part is this narrative never ends. Before step one and step two, I was saying the same thing about once I get into good medical school, I'm going to be chilling. 
Similarly, in undergrad, I was saying, once I get into a good undergrad, I'm going to be chilling. And then similarly, when you're a resident, you say, once I get into a good residency, I'm going to be chilling. The cycle never ends. So stop creating narratives for yourself that once you do X, you're going to be okay. In reality, the cycle is always going and you're always going to be working to the next step. So remember that you should always be learning and learn what your intangibles are and don't forget them. Never put your intangibles on hold. So what are your intangibles? For me, that's my family, running, relationships. And you can't put any of those on hold because I remember I would usually say like, oh, I'm not going to call my parents tonight because I'm, I'm just going to study really hard and they can wait for now. And then once I finish this, I'll, I'll be able to like hang out with them more. That never happens. It never happens. You never get to a point where you're like, once I get there, I'm going to finally focus on my family. So because of that, learn what your intangibles are and make priorities for them because it never ends. Don't create the narrative that it does because it's not a good cycle. And the last thing I'll say here is if there's something you're putting off because you think that you'll do it down the road when you have more time or when you're a resident or when you're a medical student or once you get into that dream med school, guess what? It probably won't happen because once you get into the med school, there's another whole agenda of items that's going to pop up. So if there's something you're putting off purely to fit this narrative in your mind, just know that those narratives usually aren't true and that it's important to focus on those things that you really want to do and try to make time for them now. Now is the only moment you really have. And last but not least, this one's about as real as it gets. My last piece of advice is the mistake that I made, which was don't, and then there's a bunch of things. And I say this because each of those things are things that I struggled with um, personally. I struggle to stand up for myself because, again, you're a medical student and you're kind of like almost useless. I mean, you're not technically useless, but you kind of feel like, wow, I don't really have much power here. I don't have a right to really stand up for myself. But believe it or not, you should and you do. Second of all, don't be afraid to call it a day. And what do I mean by this? Medical school is impossible. And I feel like I wish I had just given my chance um, to say like, hey, I'm just going to get some rest. I'm like, it's okay to quit. It's totally okay to quit because medicine is a journey. And just because you stopped early today doesn't mean you're stopping early for the rest of your life. And by stopping early today, you're affording yourself the time to focus a little bit more tomorrow, which makes all the difference in the long run. And then don't be afraid to ask for more. And what I mean by this is advocating for yourself. So if you're, if you're working a job and you're feeling like you're not getting compensated enough, don't be afraid to ask for more money. If you're working in a research project and you really like it, don't be afraid to ask for more responsibility. If you don't understand something, don't be afraid to ask for more help, right? And last but not least, don't focus only on academics. In my third year, I went to a cycle and it actually overwhelmed me to the point that I had to, I had to take a big pause and I wish... I wish I hadn't done that. And the reason for that is because I was focusing only on academics. I was like only going to be the best damn doctor I could be and I was studying all the time and I wish I hadn't done that. So hopefully these values and lessons help you. If they do, please drop a like, comment, share, subscribe. It means the world to me. And uh, hopefully if you all enjoyed this video, please drop Rex as well down there uh, for what you'd like to see in the next ones. And I'll see you all very soon. Thanks for watching. Peace.